Alright guys, so welcome to today's character of the video right here, and in today's video we will move on with actually loading the hair inside of your GUI. And yeah, so for those purposes, I have a bunch of hairs right here. I've created for my previous version of Pirates Voyage, so everything made by me, everything self-made guys. And I've already tried to record one episode and then I had a little bit of uh, difficulties in that episode, so my voice wasn't that clear because, I don't know, so this recording program just... Uh, <laughs> was not set up correctly yeah i'm just gonna show you guys what i've done so far and then we are going to continue so you have to create a folder called hair inside of the replicated storage and then you have to move all of these hairs inside of that and then you want to go inside of this hair frame create a local script and then write down this so what this does is that script parent refers to the hair frame the change is an event which fires when this frame has been changed Okay, in this case, we want to know if a property has changed. In this case, this property is the visibility. So if script parent visible means if this frame is visible, then we are able to load the hair images. Okay, so this local script will only function once the hair frame has become visible. And I've already tried to do this. And as you can see, we had 10 prints, but I only expected one. Okay, it seems that this code right here happens 10 times. So we need to add... Some kind of cooldown to this so some kind of debound some kind of barrier and that is to check whether this task is not only apply ce cam but hair frame is not visible yet and now by doing so this only should print out nah why is it printing out that much Sixty three times. Really? Never mind then. then. Let's try a different approach. Delete this local script. Sorry for that. Let's do it this way. So what we're going to do then is that we are just going to do everything from here. So we are going to loop through this folder called hairs, all right? Or hair, I don't know. Now, we want to create an image button for each of those hair right here. For each hair, yeah. That's what we are going to do. Wait, we're not actually going to create an image button. Sorry for that, but we are going to create a representative button. So, button. Wait, we already... Ah, uh, yeah, we viewport frame. Let's get rid of this one. Let's call this one hair button. And this one is just going to... have the name of our button right here of our hair as text so what we want to do is that we want to say all right we are creating a new variable which is going to be hair frame hair button clone so cloned version of this hair button we want to rename this to the name of the hair it is representing and we want to change the text to the name of the hair it is representing okay now let's play this let's see if this has worked okay so here didn't, didn't really work out yeah because we didn't really specify that this belongs into the scrolling frame there we go There we go. So, that's how you do this hair stuff. Make sure that this button... So, this button functions as a template. Make sure that it is not visible by default. And make sure that your scrolling frame has enough size 
so that it can really display all of the hair you got let's change oh my god let's change this to six there we go let's play this again let's see how it works okay i didn't ah yeah it doesn't work because you have to make sure that the button is set to visible because it is not visible by default you know okay now those buttons are too long so to fix that just decrease this size on the y-axis still didn't work <laughs> yeah because uh, we have to change this grid layout size i'm sorry for that so let's do it this way and there we go that's the way to do it make sure that this this option called text scaled is set to true all right there we go guys there we go all right now the next step is to see or to check whether this button was pressed so btn mouse button click function there we go so the next step is then after after this button has been clicked is to apply this here all right and <clears throat> this is a little bit more complicated because it is not only about cloning this accessory and then pasting it inside of the uh, character editor's dummy right there it is also about creating a data store and then overwriting the current hair value with the hair you've just equipped you know so in order to do this I'm going to end the video right here and then we are going to move on with the creation of the data store in the next episode to be hopefully able to, you know, do all of the rest in the future episodes. With that being said, guys, thanks for watching. See ya.